Hello everyone, I'm Human Hard Drive, and today on our Arduino tutorials, we're going to be talking about analog inputs. Now, on the Arduino board, there are on the left hand side five, sorry, six analog inputs, A0 through A5. Now, what these are are pins that are connected to pins on the chip, which natively support ADC, analog to digital conversion. Now what that means is it's taking some, whatever voltage you're putting in, comparing it to some reference value, and spitting out a number between 0 and 1023. Now it's 1023 because the Arduino has a 10-bit resolution, that's 2 to the 10th, which is 1024 possibilities, so that's 0 to 1023. Now that reference value I mentioned is given by this pin right here, it's AREF, it's the topmost pin on the right hand side of the board. Now, uh, it's recommended by the ATmega328 and by Atmel that you don't put more than 5 volts into the AREF pin. It'll damage the board, it'll damage the ADC, stuff will go wrong, it's bad, bad, bad. So, stick to 5 volts max in there, but you can put in any um, value you want less than that. Well, when I say less than that, I mean above zero. Don't go putting negative voltages in there either. So, what we're going to do to demonstrate the usefulness of the ADC or demonstrate the code of it, whoop, shaking the camera, is use one of these. Now, what we have here is called a potentiometer. And if you don't know what a potentiometer is, I recommend watching my Electronics 101 video on resistors. But what it can do is we can set it up so that it functions as a voltage divider. So it splits whatever voltage I'm putting into it and will make it smaller. Now, if you look at the potentiometer, there are two pins here. So one of these will be connected to high voltage, the other one will be connected to ground. And then this is the wiper. This is the thing that's connected to, it's called a wiper on the inside of this, which moves along a tr uh, track, which varies the resistance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop that across the rail of the breadboard. So the wiper is over here. I've got a screwdriver which I can use to turn the potentiometer. You might have a uh, potentiometer that has a long stalk on it, or you might just have two different resistors which you can tweak. And to do this I'm just going to take the high pin on the right and connect that to 5 volts. So VN ground ground 5 volts connect the lower one to ground and then connect the wiper to one of the analog inputs so let's say analog input zero and then finally to set up the reference voltage I'm going to put the one the uh, the pin we connected to 5 volts and I'm just going to plug that right into the A ref pin and there you have it now I should point out that these while they do also function as analog to digital pins, they can function as general digital pins. It's just something they're hooked up to do as well. So if you run out of digital pins on this side, remember that these pins as well are digital. So here's our circuit. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you some code to output the value that we're going to see by tweaking this potentiometer. So let's go take a look at that. Okay, so. I've opened the Arduino ID and we're going to start this up like we start off every other program with our setup and loop functions. Now what I'm going to try to do here is output the data from the analog input. Now I had said that it has 10 bits of resolution so if you open up a calculator and you look at 2 to the 10th because it's binary 1024 so 1024 possibilities so that's 0 to 1023 now the resolution bit also has to incorporate the voltage reference now we're using a 5 volt reference so 5 volts divided by 1024 possibilities meaning that each step each little increment in that value is a change of 0 0.00488 of a volt. So that's the resolution you're getting. 
0.00488 of a volt with a 5 volt voltage reference. If you were to say have a 1 volt voltage reference, that's 0 0.00976625 of a volt with each increment. So it's looking at the resolution. So the higher the resolution, the smaller an increment you get for each change. So higher resolution is good. And it's trying to get to that idea of an infinite precision where you can measure anything with infinite accuracy or just basically analog. But since we're dealing with digital, it's the only way you can deal with that. It's a little bit of a digression, but I think it'll help you understand what we're trying to do here. So, so serial.begin. With an analog input, we don't actually have to declare a pin mode for it because pin mode only pertains to digital pins. So because of that, we don't have to say pin mode A0 input. All we have to do is say serial.println, remember print. So we're printing a new line, and the value we're going to print is analog read A0. Now you actually have to say A0 to specify the difference between 0 analog and 0 digital. So there is a zero and there is zero so just remember that difference so we're going to put in a delay of 250 milliseconds and upload that to the board okay so it's uploaded now if we look at the serial monitor and I've got my potentiometer set here so 1023 that means it's reading the whole 5 volts so if I slowly bring it down, all I'm doing is turning the potentiometer a bit, and it falls. So the potentiometer, all it's doing is it's dividing the voltage. So and if I, I'm lowering the resistance now, increasing the resistance to change the voltage. So these numbers are relatively pointless. I mean, they tell you what the analog converter is reading, but it doesn't give you any useful information. It's just a number between 0 and 1023. It's not giving you the actual voltage. So we need to create some way to tell us the voltage. And there's a simple formula for that that works by looking at the ratio between the value we're reading and the whole. So if we say defined a uh, number resolution and the resolution is from 0 to 1023 or it's 2 to the resolution minus 1 0 to 1023 and we define a ref to be 5 volts uh, this define statement is just a quick way to create constants uh, it's good to use, remember that if you do use these, they have to be put at the top of the program. It's just a good way to set up constants instead of variables because they can't be changed. But I digress there as well. So let's just take this and we're going to, well, let's create a function double val to volt. And the double is going to be a value. And we're going to return. So we're creating a method called val to volt, and it's taking a parameter double val, and we're going to put this analog read value into this val. So we're going to return a ref times the ratio between the val and the resolution. So when the value we're reading is 1023, the whole 5 volts, the ratio between these two numbers is going to be 1, so it's the full 5 volts, or the full A ref. And when the value is 0, the, relation, the ratio between val and resolution is also 0, so 0 times the A ref is 0, so 0 volts. So it's just multiplying the reference voltage by the ratio between the value you're reading and the resolution. And all we've got to do is plug that in here, val to volt. Upload that again. uploading 
So if we look at the serial monitor, and I go ahead and tweak this, you can see we're actually reading a voltage instead of just some number. Now if I let it sit at a value, you could see sometimes it changes. So I'm letting it sit at, I'm not tweaking it, and it jumps around a little bit. That's You'll see that from voltage fluctuations in the device, uh, fluctuations in the converter, all these issues. Now, if you were to say look at the data sheet for this, you can see some of the problems with the AT Mega's ADC. Why? There we go. Oh. What happened? Lost my page there, sorry. Scroll. Whoa, really? Lost my page. Come on. Scroll, scroll. So here we are. You can see that there's a there's some sort of offset error and there's a gain error in its in its trying to tell you the value and an ideal value that is being the actual value. But that's to be expected in these sort of conversions. So there you have it. That's convert that's an analog to digital conversion using the Arduino's analog to digital converters. So that's really it. Uh, I'd like to point something out now. There's, I've more or less come to the end of the really useful things that you can do with this, um, the day-to-day -day things that you need to know how to, what to do. Uh, aside from basic programming skills, I've just gone over digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs, PWM, serial communication that's really all you need to know I'm still gonna continue with these tutorials um, on some of the cooler things you can do some of the more advanced things these are really the basics so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create uh, another series where I'm going to give you a puzzle a project that I create and I want you to recreate it and if you feel like going the extra mile I want to see what else you can do I want to see you build upon that and if you got something cool, I'd like uh, to see you send it to me, and it might just be mentioned in the solution video. So keep an eye out for that. That'll probably be one of the next videos I do. Um, it's also at this point where I'm asking if there's anything you want me to go over with the Arduino. Please leave it in the comments. I'd be more than happy to see your questions and help you out. So this has been Human Hard Drive. Thanks for watching.